in an accident, you're getting these benefits, you're getting your treatment, you're getting your wages, whatever, whatever uh, is involved, and eventually you're going to get a letter from your insurance company. The IME letter. <laughs> <laughs> the independent medical exam, yes. which is uh, not independent. Uh, it's independent in that uh, the insurance companies don't necessarily pay the doctors directly, <laughs> uh, from what I understand, uh, but you are going to a doctor that was set up by the insurance company uh, to give you an examination and to create a report uh, which tells the insurance company whether you are entitled to these benefits anymore. So, for instance, if you've been treating with a chiropractor, uh, they will send you to a chiropractor, chiropractor, IME doctor, independent medical examination doctor, and uh, that chiropractor will examine you, uh, write a report, and say, I feel that this uh, patient doesn't need any more treatment or needs treatment for another four to six weeks, and the insurance company will act on that report. Unfortunately, 90% uh, of the time, uh, the IME doctors find that you don't need any more treatment. Why do you think that is? Uh, okay. Well, I mean, there's, there's different reasons. Uh, some doctors feel that uh, you've reached maximum benefits or you've reached maximal, maximum potential uh, with this particular doctor. If you've been treating for four months with a chiropractor mm -hmm. and you've shown no real improvement, they're not saying that you're 100% well. I think what they're saying is that uh, maybe some other doctor can help you. This treatment hasn't helped you. It's like saying right. you've been taking this med medicine for three or four months. You still are complaining of the same pain. Why should we continue to pay for this medicine? Right. Why should uh, we continue to pay for the treatment? So when they, when they deny you and they say you, you don't need this treatment anymore, I don't think they're saying you don't need any treatment anymore. I think they're saying you don't need this treatment anymore. Hopefully this there's other treatment that you're getting. Right. Um, usually uh, the client will be... Uh, no, we're, talking about so, we're talking about soft tissue injuries. Right. Uh, but you may see a neurologist. And, right. and they'll send you to a neurological doctor, and that doctor will determine whether or not you need continued neurological benefits. And you can be denied a chiropractic benefits, but not neurological or, or orthopedic benefits. Or acupuncture, or does that usually go hand-in-hand -hand with chiropractic? Uh, acupuncture actually usually falls, strangely enough, under orthopedic. It's usually physical therapy, acupuncture, orthopedic. Uh, but they, they will send you to an independent doctor for acupuncture as well. Uh, but they... They can't deny you uh, the category. For instance, if, you go, if you're treating with a chiropractor, yeah. uh, they can't deny you orthopedic benefits right. uh, if you just go see a chiropractic IME right. doctor. Right. So. Well, so that was the one reason you said that uh, you're often denied. What's the other reason? Uh, the other reason is that, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> they, it's not they're, saving, they're, they're <laughs> saving money for the insurance company, basically. I mean... Over this process, the insurance company is paying these doctors for your treatment. And, uh, you know, the insurance company is not going to pay six, seven, eight months of chiropractic treatment. They just don't. Right. And uh, they feel that their money can be better spent uh, if you go for other treatment. So you think the doctors uh, or some of the doctors that do these, I, uh, these IMEs are already aware of the fact that... Um, what, that they're, they're supposed to deny uh, future well, care or that it's in the best interest of the hand that's feeding well, them? Well, I, I do think that um, the independent medical doctor will not get as many uh, independent medical examinations if they keep... The uh, hand that feeds them. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, that, that's another reason why. Uh, it's a business, and I think that the doctors, they want to earn... The independent medical examination right. doctors want to earn their money as well, right. and they're not going right. to do that if, uh, if they keep... Give him more treatment. Okay, yeah. so so now I'm this this guy who had this accident. I hurt my neck. I hurt my back. I went to a chiropractor, a neurologist, uh, an acupuncturist. I got checked out by an orthopedist, and now all of a sudden I'm seeing all these doctors for the insurance company. And now all of a sudden I'm getting these letters saying that my benefits have been terminated. They're not paying for any more treatment, but I still have pain. Right. I come to you, my lawyer, and I say, What do I do now? Usually my first uh, answer is you should discuss this with your doctor because uh, the IME report isn't necessarily the correct decision for you. Uh, as we've just discussed, there's other reasons why you may be getting denied. Uh, your treating doctor knows you best, and if your treating doctor feels that his treatment is going to continue to help you, under the no-fault rules, your treating doctor really is supposed to continue to treat you, con continue to bill the no-fault company, and... Down the road, either the doctor's attorney or our firm would arbitrate 
uh, the doctor's bills, and if an independent arbitrator uh, feels that the denial was incorrect, hmm. the insurance company has to pay your doctor plus interest uh, for the treatment after right. denial. That's a perfect world. The perfect world. <laughs> what happens in an imperfect world? An imperfect world is uh, the doctor, your treating doctor, is afraid that he's not going to get paid for the treatment that uh, <clears throat> he renders to you, and uh, he asks you to put the case on a lien or the treatment on a lien, uh, or go through your own private if you have private medical, uh, or pay out of pocket. So when you say put the case, uh, the treatment on a lien, you want you mean the doctor asserts a lien against that person's case, my right. case with my lawyer, and now when I get my money for my case, the doctor is going to collect. And now for some pay, for some payment for treatment that he rendered after the denial. Now, if I settle my case for fifty thousand dollars, and the doctor gets a thousand dollars of my money uh, from this lien, do I have any recourse to uh, try to recoup that money from the insurance company? Well, you can uh, if you show uh, that you paid this doctor. Right. Uh, but not not through a lien, actually. You can't really through a lien. The lien is an agreement between the doctor, yourself, and our firm, or the, the law firm. Right. And uh, you're saying that uh, I need more treatment, and uh, I will pay the doctor from my, okay. my case. Uh, if you go through your own private, and um, you, they can also assert a lien on the case uh, after denial. So GHI or Oxford or whatever it is. Right. You can show uh, that you've paid for treatment through the lien, and again, we can arbitrate for that client to for, get reimbursed. To get reimbursed, yeah. Usually, it's for a higher. It's not for five extra chiropractic visits or well, you know, something like that. Well, it's a thousand dollars or yeah. something like that. Um, uh, I guess a thousand would be the. I mean, sometimes you you see um, somebody's been cut off for uh, treatment, and now their doctor's telling them they need surgery. Mm -hmm. Let's say there's a tear in the knee. The insurance company won't allow any more orthopedic care. Right. Uh, so they go through their private health insurance, and now you've got a bill for two, three, or four thousand dollars for surgery rehab. Um, do you see that? We see it, and uh, assuming that your private health carrier will cover it, because the general rule again is that if it's a, a car accident, no fault is the primary insurance. Uh, but sometimes, once you have a denial, uh, your health coverage will then pick it up after that. Uh, so. They will pay for the surgery. Right. Uh, the doctor will get paid, and they will assert a lien, meaning GHI or Aetna uh, will assert a lien on the case, and you will owe that money back to Aetna. What about people that get denied um, coming to you and asking you to fight the denial right there? Uh, almost impossible. Yeah. Uh, because once the insurance companies have their independent medical examination report, uh, they're going to stick by it. And, and you can't arbitrate a decision to deny you. You have to arbitrate a monetary value. Uh, and to do that, the doctor has to continue to treat, uh, let there be a monetary value, and then you arbitrate those bills. There's no appeal? Uh, not, well, my understanding is not in New York. There's, there's really no. Uh, I mean, you can provide them with... Uh, more documentation, and they will send your documentation to one of their doctors. It's called a peer review. Right. And uh, their doctor may turn around and say, well, we didn't have all the information. Well, we've had that happen where they were missing something or we had some additional information and we want them to look at, uh, you know, because let's face it, a lot of these uh, medical exams that we, we, you know, we've seen our clients go through, a lot of them have, have been no more than a few minutes long. Yeah. In fact, we've had clients say, you know, I was examined for two minutes. Uh, I was examined for five minutes. The doctor never touched me. Uh, and we wind up getting a four-page uh, mm. report with range of motion results and, and things that, absurd. In, in my opinion, cannot be done in two or three minutes. Right. Uh, so, I mean, I, my feeling is that when you arbitrate uh, these bills, the arbitrator's want to find for the doctors or the client. They, they don't necessarily want to find for the insurance company, but you have to provide enough information to show that the insurance company was wrong to deny you. What's something that you see doctors doing wrong in their billing practices that, that hurt their chances of collecting money on well, these denials? Well, uh, I've seen some doctors who on their daily notes uh, will, will write uh, same complaint as above, same complaint as last time they were Each here. Each day. Yeah, every day it's the same thing, same 
same treatment, uh, same complaints, same results. And if that's the case, you're probably not going to win an arbitration because what you want to do is you want to show an arbitrator that uh, the, your, your patient is continuing to improve even after the denial. Treatment's helping. Right. I mean, basically what they're saying in their denial is you've reached maximal, maximum benefits. And if you can show that they haven't yet, um, we used to arbitrate for uh, a chiropractor who would show every few months uh, range of motion tests uh, where the range of motion continually improved. And if you can show that, the arbitrator almost all the time is going to find in your favor.